the most obvious. You are not the father moments on paternity court. Now she did just admit to that in court. That's what you're talking about, right? After the baby was born. These tears, this is about your child. Am I correct? This is about my kid. I don't care about how nobody feel. I just want to get this over with. Doubt all over this courtroom. That's like why we're here! In this episode of who is obviously the father or not the father in paternity court, Miss Smith appears in court, uncertain about her four-month-old son's paternity due to a miscalculation during her pregnancy. Her ex-boyfriend and her fiancé, Mr. Brooker, are the potential fathers. However, doubts and detective work have left Mr. Brooker questioning the evidence. Miss Smith, you are here in court today because you claim a miscalculation during your pregnancy has left you unsure about the paternity of your four-month-old son Lamandre. Now, today you hope to determine whether your ex-boyfriend or the defendant, Mr. Brooker, fathered your child. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Brooker, you're Miss Smith's fiance. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and you're one of her son's possible father. Yes. Mr. Brooker hilariously admits to having morning conversations with Miss Smith, where he sometimes can't decipher what's being said. However, confusion arises due to a miscalculation during Miss Smith's pregnancy, leading her to believe her ex-boyfriend could be the father. She sought medical advice from three different doctors doctors, adding to the suspense of this gripping paternity case. That is such a cute picture. We like we like to talk in the morning. He, you like to talk? Yeah, talk <laughs> uh-huh. What do you all talk about? I, I, you all are engaged. Yes, ma'am. We, um, we plan on getting married in September. September. So now, Miss Smith, talk to me about this miscalculation. What happened? Miss Smith reveals a baffling mix-up during her pregnancy, with different doctors providing conflicting due dates, one corresponding with her time with Mr. Brooker. The suspense intensifies. The ultrasound adds to the confusion, leaving the court and audience on the edge of their seats. The uncertainty surrounding the due dates adds an unexpected twist to this enthralling paternity case. So this is where it gets confusing. I was stating that me and Mr. Brooker had sex August on the 14th, and then that's when I, I went to the doctor again on the, the 24th, and they gave me a date of May 13th. And at that time, I'm like, that corresponds with the time me and him started having sex. In this riveting episode, Dr. Gator sheds light on the perplexing situation of conflicting due dates. Miss Smith's irregular menstrual cycle caused a discrepancy in the estimated due dates, leading to confusion in determining the father. With expert testimony, the court delves deeper into the complexities of pregnancy calculations, keeping the audience on the edge of their seats. Have you reviewed the paperwork we submitted to you and her evidence? Yes, I've reviewed the medical records. Can you hold up the calendar so we can understand this? Thank you. All right, so Dr. Gator, as you can see, on July 17th is the last time Ms. Smith was intimate with her ex. Yes. During this emotional exchange, Miss Smith revealed her conversation with Mr. Brooker about the possible paternity, and he expressed both excitement and sadness at the prospect of being a father. Despite the uncertainty, Mr. Brooker was determined to be supportive and attended the initial doctor's appointments. So what were you telling him? Well, I, I let him know up front that, you know, Trey could possibly be the father, but he was really upset because it would have been his first child, and that would have just made him happy. But he said that if I, you know... Did he go to doctor's appointments? Yes. Oh, did it you all go to the same one? Oh, nah. The at-home test results shockingly show 0% probability of paternity for Mr. Brooker. Miss Smith, on the other hand, questions the accuracy of the test, considering her son was born prematurely and the nurse advised against it. Both parents express their love and concern for the child's well-being, emphasizing the importance of knowing the truth. So these are the results of your at-home test. Yes, ma'am. It says probability of paternity, zero percent. What did you think then? I still my baby. You did? Oh, yes, ma'am. Miss Smith, you say you don't believe this test was accurate? I don't, no, I don't believe that. In a highly emotional moment on paternity court, the truth is finally unveiled, sending shockwaves through the room. Mr. Brooker's face betrays a mix of surprise and anticipation as the test results are disclosed, while Miss Smith nervously grips her seat. The outcome isn't what they expected, but their commitment to face it together is evident. Mr. Brooker, you are not his father. I'm sorry to have to deliver that news. It's okay. I'm still going to be there. In the most obvious, you are not the father moment on paternity court, Miss Johnson is certain that Mr. Lewis is the father of Josiah. However, doubts arise due to false rumors and an ex-boyfriend's claims of potential paternity. They reconnected on Facebook after being friends in middle school, and when Miss Johnson becomes pregnant, the paternity mystery unfolds. That Mr. Lewis is the father of your six-month-old daughter, Josiah. 
You say the only reason he doubts paternity is because he heard false rumors. Now, Mr. Lewis, you and your mother say it's not only the rumors that have caused you to doubt, but also an ex-boyfriend of Miss Johnson's, the baby's biological father. Mr. Lewis recalls the heart-wrenching conversation when Miss Johnson revealed her pregnancy. Overwhelmed with mixed emotions, he broke down in tears, reflecting his joy and fear at the prospect of becoming a father. The weight of responsibility and uncertainty consumed him, yet he remained determined to face this life-altering situation with courage and love. So you found out from Miss Johnson? Yes. How did you find out? Take me back to that. She called me and told me that she was pregnant. So when your son came home and you had, you talked to him about it, how did you feel? You, you know, Miss Johnson's pregnant. She said, I'm the father. And he immediately broke down crying. Did you feel like it was tears of joy or both, fear? Both. I okay. think it was both. Amidst family turmoil and external doubts, Miss Johnson bravely stood by her belief in Mr. Lewis as the father. Despite negative influences, she kept reassuring him of the truth. However, during the pregnancy, their journey was bumpy, with heated confrontations from Mr. Lewis and his mother. Nonetheless, he did accompany her to some doctor's appointments, showing a glimmer of support. Miss Johnson, were you aware that members of your family told Miss Lewis that there could be others? Yeah, I was aware it was his baby, but he was still believing one of my family members. Why would your family members say that about you? Because they never want to see me happy with anybody. Why? Right, that's your family. I don't know. In a shocking twist, Miss Johnson's ex-boyfriend believed he was the father due to a relative's false information. He reached out to her, and she clarified that she had always maintained that Mr. Lewis was the father. Despite her honesty with Mr. Lewis, the misinformation from her relative led to confusion, further complicating the situation. So he reached out to you and said what? He reached what? out to me on in an instant message and said, call me ASAP. And you called? And I called him ASAP. She told me that I was the father. Miss Johnson, did you tell your ex that he... One of my relatives told my ex that he was the father. Your relatives? The court was trying to understand if there was a possibility that either man could be the father. Miss Johnson affirms that Mr. Lewis is the likely father, but her ex-boyfriend insists on being involved due to misleading information from her family. The court confronts the conflicting claims and sets out to determine the truth behind the paternity dilemma. Even if your family told him something, if you looked at him and said, no, my family's wrong, Mr. Lewis is the father of this child, it is not your child, why would he take it upon himself to get on three-way conversations on social media? What is his point? Because they used to always try to set me up. Who? Mr. Lewis and one in my ex. Emotions run high as Mr. Lewis sees a resemblance between himself and Josiah, while Miss Lewis acknowledges the similar Similarities, but holds back emotionally until paternity is determined. Mr. Lewis expresses his strong desire for joint custody and giving Josiah his last name, but Miss Lewis firmly disagrees. The courtroom is on edge, waiting to see how the situation unfolds and if the truth will be revealed. Mr. Lewis and Miss Lewis, you submitted these photos to the court, and that's Josiah on the left, and that's Mr. Lewis as a baby on the right. Like, I think she kind of resembled me, like she looked like me and my mom. You too, Miss Lewis? Um, I see the resemblance, but emotionally and spiritually, I just couldn't go there. In a heartwarming paternity court moment, emotions soar as the truth is unveiled, leaving Miss Johnson teary-eyed. With the court's permission, Mr. Lewis and Miss Lewis share an emotional meeting with beautiful baby Josiah for the first time, prompting applause from the entire courtroom. Mr. Lewis, you are Josiah's father. <laughs> How you feel, Miss Johnson? I feel good. Get ready for the most intense and shocking moment on paternity court. Miss Adams urgently presents her son, Mr. Adams, via satellite from Flint, Michigan, where he faces potential arrest for child support issues. They aim to prove he's not the father of the defendant's three-year-old son to keep him out of jail. Mr. Adams is joining us via satellite from Flint, Michigan, because he's been prohibited by law enforcement from leaving your home state. You claim he's on the verge of being arrested for back child support, and you're both with us today to prove he's not the father of the defendant's three-year-old Son. As tensions rise in the courtroom, the truth unfolds about Miss Adams's pregnancy and her ex-boyfriend's involvement. The paternity test results are in, and the moment of truth approaches. Will it confirm Mr. Adams as the father or shatter his hopes of proving otherwise? Brace yourself for the answer of if he is not the father. You tell him you're pregnant. Yes. What happened? Me and my ex was still trying to make things work and we were still messing around. When you got pregnant, you didn't even include Mr. Adams in this equation. No, I didn't. You thought it was your ex's. And yes, your ex yes, said, I did. well, it's 
test mine too and you all went through this whole process but then you yes. had a test it was not your ex as the tension rises miss williams denies ever telling miss adams that mr adams was not the father however as they dig deeper into the timeline doubts emerge judge lake highlights the complexities of the situation leaving miss adams doubtful the courtroom is on edge as the truth continues to unfold did you that's tell her lie. that miss williams no that's a lie she never seen me when i was pregnant yes i did so you don't remember this happening matter of fact i take that back i wasn't nine months pregnant i was still in the middle of the pregnancy so you said it's not his yes but you understand why this could then make her doubtful yes i do witnessing the courtroom drama unfold miss williams takes a stand to better herself for her child earning applause from the audience however mr adams doubts her intentions as conflicting statements emerge about the paternity miss williams claims it was just a possibility but mr adams firmly believes she previously said the baby wasn't his you trying to better yourself I'm trying to better myself and get your yes. life together for your child yes i am that's what i want to hear and Mr. Adam, was it your understanding that you may be the father or that you were the father? Well, Your Honor, after she had her ex-boyfriend tested, she basically was trying to come at me like I was the father. Mr. Adams reveals that he was declared the father by default and placed on child support without a DNA test. Miss Adams claims she made the claims, but Miss Williams denies knowledge of the test. As evidence is shown, tensions escalate and the arrears pile up. The court must uncover the truth to resolve this contentious situation. Mr. Adams, how did you even find out that you were deemed to be the father by default and you had already been placed on child support? How'd you find this out? At the beginning of this year, I started receiving paperwork telling me that I had to make payments of $99 per month for a child that I haven't even been tested for yet. In the case of Adams v. Williams, the moment of truth has arrived. The question of whether Mr. Adams is the father of three-year-old John Jones looms over everyone. The tension is palpable as the verdict is about to be revealed. That Mr. Adams is not the father. Hey, take me off child support, baby. The most shocking moment on paternity court where it's obvious who is not the father. Miss Curtis confronts her mother, Miss Hall, in court, alleging that she kept the truth about her biological father hidden for 14 years. A potential father is present, but the truth remains uncertain. Secrets are exposed, and a family's future hangs in the balance. Miss Curtis, you have brought your mother, Miss Hall, to court today because you say she hid the identity of your father from you for 14 years. There's a man waiting outside of the courtroom that your mother believes could be your biological father, yet you still have no idea if that's yes, your honor. 049. Tensions rise as Miss Curtis confronts her mother, Miss Hall, about the hidden truth. Miss Hall confesses she planned to tell Abril about her father at 16, but life intervened. Emotions run high as Miss Curtis yearns to know her father's identity. Will the truth finally be unveiled, or will this family's secret continue to keep them apart? I knew one day that I'll have to sit up real down and talk to her and let her know who her father is. The time that I set forth for her was at the age of 16. I was the mother. I was the one who took care of you, raised you. You raised me, but I didn't have a father. It did, it did not matter whether you had a father or not because I was the mother. I was the one that was supporting you, keeping a roof over your head. Miss Curtis tearfully expresses her heartbreak of missing the father-daughter dance while Judge Lake emphasizes its significance. The truth behind her father figure unravels as Miss Hall's guilt surfaces. The courtroom eagerly awaits the identity of Miss Curtis's real father, creating an emotional and suspenseful moment. You gotta listen to your daughter because she's telling you what she feels. This was an event that everybody I knew got to go to. It's called the father-daughter dance. And I, it, when she said it, my heart dropped to my feet because I've been to the father-daughter dance. She did have a father to go with at the time because I was married at the time with a father figure that was in the home. The moment of truth arrives as Miss Hall denies receiving the letter from Kirk, the potential biological father. With emotions running high, Judge Lake unveils the contents of the letter, revealing Kirk's willingness to be the father Miss Curtis needs. Miss Hall feels deceived, and Miss Curtis expresses frustration at the situation. This is the first time she'll ever see the letter. He does state he's willing to be the father she needs and deserves, and it's signed Kirk. And Your Honor, I know you may not understand how I feel about this right here, but that's where I feel like I was deceived in Cross because I had my time that I had set aside to do the right thing. Miss Curtis expresses her doubts, having been lied to about her father's identity for so long. The uncertainty surrounding her paternity causes tension, with both Miss Hall and Mr. Whitaker acknowledging the difficulty of the situation. The audience is captivated by the emotional roller coaster, wondering if the truth will finally come to light. So your point is, is that this wasn't the first time somebody said they were pregnant, and in your mind you were thinking, yeah, well, you might be coming after me because of this or that, and I don't truly 
necessarily believe it. And not only that, is that, that she was uh, in relation with somebody else. In a heartfelt moment, Miss Curtis reveals the letters exchanged with her father while he was in prison, expressing her hope for a stronger bond upon his release. However, disappointment sets in as he fails to fulfill the promises made in those letters. The tension escalates as the audience sympathizes with Miss Curtis, eagerly waiting for the truth to unfold. He was in prison. You got a letter from him. Yes, And then I did. you wrote him back. Yes. Explain to me wh he, what happens in that relationship. He wanted to know little things about me so he can get to know me through the letters. He promised me when he come home, he'll do things for me that he's never done. When he got home, he didn't do none of that, and he still haven't done none of that. In an electrifying moment, the court reveals Miss Miss Curtis's father, leaving the audience in suspense. The heartfelt emotions and applause fill the room as the truth unfolds. Tears of joy and laughter embrace this newfound revelation, while the significance of truth is highlighted by Judge Lake. Mr. Whitaker, you are her father. <laughs> I'm really happy to have my dad. You know, mommy had to make some choices. Well, you know what I think is wonderful? The most important foundation we can all stand on. Do you get it? Yes. 